Welcome to the Shared Practices Podcast. We're doing a season on growth today, and I wanted to bring on a guest who's grown in a variety of different ways and and had a little bit of trial and error um, and is also a good friend of mine. So uh, welcome, doc, Dr. Matthew Standridge. Uh, how's it going, man? Hey, man, it's uh, really good. To, it's been a while. I think the last t- time I saw you face to face, I think it was down in Austin, wasn't it? Yeah. With, uh, at at uh, Twan's, the Dental Maverick. Um, yeah. Class. I think that I think that's the last time we actually got to hang out, you know, in person. So. Well, and every time I see you, there's there's less of you and, and more <laughs> muscle. I mean, your your keto gains have been uh, off the charts, and uh, you're you're an inspiration and impressive in 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 that topic. And, and that's a whole nother topic. If you get us talking about keto <laughs> and intermittent fasting. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll share that rabbit hole for another time. So. Yeah, it's a whole different podcast. <laughs> so. Well, um, tell our listeners, um, I, I feel like I can't remember who it was who, who recently took your course. Um, we have some some people at Shared Practices, uh, Tyler Tolbert, uh, Aaron Fritch. Um, I'm trying to think who I, I feel like someone has taken your course recently and they're raving about it. So uh, awesome. I appreciate that. Whoever that, that mystery person is. Yeah. It been, uh, was it Matthew Calkins? He's he's been a big kind of uh, fan of the course. But yeah, I appreciate who's ever uh, who's ever sharing it. That's awesome. Yeah. So so tell us, how did you uh, you know, what what is this? You've got kind of one course you're teaching right now and one that you're cooking for the future. Tell us right. about both of those. Yeah, so I I started um, my Ortho Foundations course, which is just through me, and um, I'm going to start uh, this year. Obviously, put a wrench in those plans, but I'm going to start up again in 2021, and I'll probably start some more online versions as well. But Ortho Foundations to me was uh, I was looking around at orthodontic continuing education, you know, programs, and every every program was like trying to sell you a system, like trying to sell you their proprietary stuff and use their labs and use their, you know, disposables and materials and all that stuff. And like, there was no good course that really taught just the, the fundamentals of orthodontics of movements. How, how do these tooth movements work? How do you diagnose a case? How do you, what, what strength and weaknesses do brackets have versus aligners? When you look at a case, how would you tell? Is this an aligner case or do I actually need brackets? Um, there was nothing out there uh, that was go- that even remotely broke this stuff down for people, but in, in, in a digestible way, because right. I don't know about you, Richard, but um, I walked away dental school with zilch for ortho training. Right. Um, <laughs> I, I, I won't even know how to put a bracket on a tooth. And so, um, and so I was looking around at that and I'm just like, there, there, there's just, a, there's a hole that, um, you know, there was an empty space in the, uh, in the education. So that's well, why I started my ortho foundations course. And, and clear aligners, like we're not like, I don't even know when they were introduced, but you know, 10, 15 years ago, it, it was not what it is today. Like the right. options were not available and maybe they were, but, and I just didn't know about them, but um, it seems like a lot has changed and, and mm-hmm. a lot more tools are at our disposal. Mm-hmm. And so then it's like, how do I know what to use and when to use it and when to yeah. refer out and when this is in, you know, and how do I choose a company? Do I do it myself? Do I print it myself? Do, exactly. I, print it off? do I scan it? Do I take the impression? There's so many questions that come yeah. with doing this. 100%. So that's what that's what I started that course for. And um, uh, Blue Sky Bio kind of reached out to me a little bit about that. And because um, they knew I'd been using their Blue Sky plan for a few years. And so they knew what I was doing. And so they had um, agreed to help sponsor, you know, the, the course and everything if I want to put it on. But what's cool about that is that they've given me zero, like, input on like we want you to say this here we, huh. we want you to do that they've given me no pressure to push anything so i've been uh, extremely grateful That's for cool. that and so um so yeah with my ortho foundations course it was basically um it's more diagnosis and going over this stuff and then we do a little bit of, i use blue sky plan to plan cases 
that people could then either use aligners for or if they wanted to do bracketing and utilize Blue Sky Clan for indirect bonding trays and stuff like that. So that's where that's where that started at. And then um, from there, I, um, I'm friends with uh, Tarun Agarwal and I'm a big fan of his stuff and love what he's done with 3D Dennis. And he reached out about bringing um, orthodontics to their 3D dentist curriculum. Mm. And so we are in the works of, um, of creating an adult cosmetic ortho program from them. So it'll have my ortho foundations because I'm still big on diagnosis because I want people to learn from my mistakes mm. <laughs> and I've made plenty. And so, uh, what's the saying, you know, a wise man learns from his mistakes, but a very smart man learns from the mistakes of others. Right. And I want people to be smarter than me. <laughs> and sure. so, um, and so that's why I'm so huge on diagnosis. So I'm actually flying out in a couple of weeks to go to his studio and record my ortho foundations course online. Oh, cool. So for people who are wanting to do the adult cosmetic ortho, that's going to be like the prerequisite is to do that online. So that way, when you come in, um, for the in, per- in person training, um, where we're going to be actually going in dig- and bonding attachments, bonding brackets, you know, going through wires, all of that stuff. Um, you already have that foundational piece, um, okay. taken care of. So that's really cool. And, and it, um, you mentioned before the call that that course in person will be not just for doctor, but doctor and assistant. Yeah, it's geared to cover a, a doctor and an assistant. Um, and then uh, I believe we are planning on making additional assistance um, available. But um, with the whole COVID thing sure. and space, you know, social distancing, we may not have to do that. But we'll yeah, see. Yeah, one and one at first and, mm-hmm. and from there. But yeah, and we were wanting to do like doctor breakout session, assistant breakout sessions and stuff like that. So that way, because... Ortho, it's a team sport. I mean, oh, yeah. if you're going to be productive and profitable at it, you have to delegate. And so we, that's why it's uh, that's why it's really geared towards bringing your team. And same thing with my Ortho Foundations course. It's really geared to bring one or two people. Um, I had one person bring his both of his assistants and his hygienist. Mm. And they, I get from feedback from him, their team, as far as ortho, being able to talk ortho to patients is just, it's just skyrocketed. So that's fantastic. So, okay, cool. So, um, look for that new course coming out. You've got your, your, you know, the one that you've, uh, had in the past. Now you're making that digital and then you've got the in-person one. Um, first weekend is in February of 20, it's February 18th and 19th. In, um, out at Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay, and that's that's the in-person one where they will have taken the online one before yeah. coming. Okay, cool. Well, uh, send me the link afterwards because I'm uh, I'm gonna see absolutely. If we'll do it. It lines up. Um, so I I remember we met. Um, I think we met at a townie meeting, mm-hmm. um, like in 2014 when I was yeah. working for Dental Town in in mm-hmm. dental school, and. I, you know, I loved both your contributions on Dental Town, and then in person, you know, we just had a blast. Kind of, we hit things off. I think Corey Glenn was there, mm-hmm. uh, and, and all just hanging out. And and I've been watching your journey and hearing your stories from afar as I've been in the army and um, doing stuff with shared practices. And and one thing we do a lot at shared practices is pivot, and you know, we decide to go for something, yeah. and then we realize, hey, this this is. Uh, maybe not what I thought it was going to be. And I need to make a decision and, and, and go a different direction. And I remember very distinctly a pivot that you made around multi-practice ownership. So I want to hear the story from you um, from the beginning up, up until that point. Um, how did your ownership journey start off? And what was the moment where you decided, you know what, I want to try multi-practice ownership. So that's two different whole stories there. You bet. So I started my first office. I graduated UMKC in 2010 and I spent a couple years in public health. And so I started my first practice back in my hometown uh, in 2012. And it was a previous dentist office, but had been vacant for, for quite a while. And so I was looking at going back to the area. And so when I found that, it was kind of serendipitous. 
So, um, so yeah, that's where I started there in 2012. And then I was, I was pretty, I was pretty busy and I had been at tackling and really hit the ground running with the continuing education. Cause I knew I wanted to, um, provide more services. And especially since where I'm at is fairly rural and, um, not, it's not like I have specialists in the same building or down the street. So my situation might be a little bit different from others, but I, I knew that I wanted to offer more. And so I started hitting the ground running there. And so, I mean, I was pretty busy already. We just had a little three op practice and, um, and things were going Go, things were going fine. And it was in 2015 that, or actually 2014, the dentist in the next town over had reached out to me about knowing if anybody would want to buy his practice. He was looking to retire and all that stuff. He'd been looking for a buyer for a few years, but nobody, uh, no real leads. And so he asked, uh, he asked, reached out to me if I knew anybody or if I myself would be interested. Now, I wasn't interested. I was like, you know, I'm busy enough here, but um, I I want these small, these rural areas to still have a dentist. And so because he was the only dentist in his town. And so um, I actually went recruiting for him, <laughs> trying oh, wow. to find someone to help him out. Um, but after about Oh, I'd say almost a year of doing that. There are just no, no real leads. And so he finally is like, okay, um, when I ask you one more time, uh, do you want this practice? Cause if not, I'm just going to close the doors at the end of the year and, um, you know, walk away. Okay. So then I was like, well, talk money, you know, what, what are you thinking? And he gave me a, a number that I couldn't refuse. And sure. so all of a sudden I'm like, well, darn, now I have two practices. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't pass it up. He had a nice little office, um, uh, decent production. And he just like gave it to me on a fire sale. So including the building. And so I'm just like, I can't, I cannot do this, you know? So, so this wasn't, this isn't a tale of ambition. This is like a tale of accidental multi-practice owner. <laughs> well, and I'd always kind of thought about it, it yeah. was, but it's just, I, what, I didn't feel ready at right. that time because I was just busy and I was learning and all that stuff. So um, I'd always thought about it and I thought that's what I'd want to do. So it wasn't outside of the realm. It's just, sure. I wasn't expecting it then, if that sure. makes sense. So, um, so yeah, in 2015, I bought the, I bought the practice and, um, and so and from how, February, how big of a practice was it? How many ops, uh, yeah. how much was it collecting? How many patients, what like, uh, active patients did it have type thing? Yeah. So it's just, it was a, it was like my first office, a little three op office. It was collecting about, uh, it was collecting about 500,000. Okay. Um, but really low overhead. It was dated. It was a dated practice, sure. but, uh, um, but it was clean practice. They still had, they still had film and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, they were collecting about, um, 500 and, um, and he was working less days. He only worked like 150 days out of the year or something okay. like that. And so, uh, and uh, active patients were about um, 1,300. Okay. And so, you know, I mean, it's small town, small town Kansas, so it's not going to be like a huge practice by any means. But it was, it was nice and profitable. And so, um, one hygienist or two? One and a half. Yeah, one, one full time, half. one part time. Okay, like six hygiene days somewhere around there yeah. a week or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's uh, that's where it was at. And I uh, bought that in 2015. So for two years, um, I had two offices because I worked both and I had a part time associate at, at the second office. And um, and yeah, uh, that's when. I started realizing that multi-practice ownership was not um, for me. And I'll go into how I learned that lesson. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So for a, the longest time, for those two years, um, I just was not able to focus on my health. You you'd mentioned about the weight loss and all that stuff. And you know, I was just putting in six, six days a week uh, at a minimum. 
um, between clinical and administrative stuff between the two offices. My back and neck was hurting from the volume. And um, I just did not really enjoy a quality of life, like managing the it's it's obviously not just the dentistry. It's the management of everything. Right. And if people are wanting to get into multi practice, because I care about doing dentistry and doing dentistry with these hands and doing it to a high level. And what I have found for the most, there's always going to be your outliers, but for the, for the majority of people, if looking for practice ownership, you have to ask yourself, do I want to be a hands-on dentist or do I want to be a manager? Mm. Because if you want to be a manager, then by all means, you know, do multi practices. But if your goal is to do be productive with your own hands, um, that's tough, tough to do with um, with multiple practices. And especially when you start throwing in associates and stuff like that, other other doctors and everything, and then plus all the team and the patients and stuff like that, and running the business side of things. And so I just I was not um, I wasn't home like I was tired when I went home. So I might have physically been there, but mentally I was just gone. I was over time became more and more depressed Mm -hmm. and um, and, you know, what what turned from like, you know, drinking, you know, having some drinks at the end of the week would be to have a few drinks, having a drink nightly and, you know, all that stuff. And it just, um, and also in 2015, our, um, our first child was born That's as right. well. And we had our first daughter, Hazel. And so, um, I was in, uh, you know, so a couple of years later, I have a two year old, I'm depressed, I'm worked to the bone and I, I had to take a hard look inward about like, well, what am I doing to myself? And is well, this really worth it? And, and I can imagine um, staffing in like the beauty of a rural practice is that, you know, you've got patients who like want to see you. They're very loyal that, you know, they're very happy to keep stuff in house and not be referred out. Yeah. Um, you know, pretty low stress, low expectations. I mean, uh, you know, I've had friends describing their rural practices and ton of advantages. I feel like staffing is one of the biggest disadvantage. Yeah. Is it's hard to find good people. And when you've got such a small pool to hire from, right. and then, you know, multiply that by two, um, mm-hmm losing a key team member is is a massive fire that yeah. you're having to put out did you experience some turnover in that time and and was that part of the stress or or were you like fully staffed the whole time no um turnover was a huge thing like you talked about really finding keep uh, key people and especially when you start adding advanced services you start adding orthodontics you start adding implants you do all this stuff that you're going to need to be able to delegate to. And, um, you know, it's really tough to find people, train them up. And for orthodontics, for example, um, I there was an, uh, Gar- the Garrity program had an orthodont- uh, assistant training program, orthodontic mm-hmm. assistant training program. I probably, I probably sent to probably five assistants throughout the year to that uh, program. Um, guess how many are still with me? I don't know how many zero. <laughs> you say, yeah, the sprint ray pro 3d printing ecosystem gives you the tools to manufacture all kinds of treatment appliances right in your office. You can use it to make clear aligners, occlusal guards, full arch surgical guides, dentures, and much, much more without the long wait times and fees of traditional labs. Having in-office manufacturing for so many different applications gives clinicians full control of their workflow. You can deliver surgical guides and occlusal guards next day or same day if you need to, or create replacements for lost or broken retainers and night guards on the spot. SprintRay puts the clinician in full control of the digital workflow, enabling dental offices to provide a better patient experience with tailored custom treatments that are affordable and fast. Because SprintRay supports open design formats, you can use any intraoral scanner and dental CAD software. 
If you want the flexibility of in-office manufacturing without learning design, you can partner with a digital lab for rapid turnaround times. The SprintRay 3D printing ecosystem gives you tools to take control of your digital workflow. SprintRay has done something pretty awesome for shared practices listeners. If you go to SprintRay.com SP, they've put together a bundle where if you order the SprintRay Pro, which is the printer that I have and use now, you'll get two free bottles of resin that go with that. So once again, go to SprintRay.com SP. Because we're trying to do things at a high level, um, it's, I, I had to kiss a lot of frogs um, as far as uh, getting, um, getting team on board and stuff like that. So Well, well and so I, I run into this recently, too, where um, you, you get an office that's very used to doing bread and butter dentistry. Yes. And all of a sudden you say, hey, we're going to do endo. And you're like, oh, crap, we got to buy all the endo stuff and we got to like learn how to stock the endo stuff. We got to learn how to appoint and figuring out how long that appointment is supposed to take and billing for that and mm -hmm. all of these little logistics for one one procedure. And then you multiply that again. You say, oh, you know what? We're going to bring implants and then, you know, single implants and then all yeah. on X or over dentures and yeah. um, ortho and, and clear aligners and brackets. Every time you do that, it's it's really hard for a small team to get efficient and effective yes. at, at a variety of procedures. Um, and, and, and then to do that at more than one office yeah. um, and repeat that with all of the equipment and the scheduling and the, the billing and, and all of that, mm -hmm. it, it kind of almost doesn't work. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it'd be, it'd be uh, more, it, it would be a lot more, easy if folks either just stuck uh, to basic dentistry or did specialty niche stuff and so you, you know you you focus on your core things you're not having to have all of these plates spinning you know what i mean because and so yeah that what you said is spot on absolutely and and and, you know, I'm speaking from recent experience here of like, OK, I, you know, I, I had this idea of I want to be the traveling specialist and, and have, uh, you know, mm -hmm. a few offices and, and do those specialty procedures. And and it's not as simple as as it sounds, especially when you're trying to do multiple specialty procedures and then just put out the fires and keep offices running and, and keep people happy and deal yeah. with all that turnover. Um, did you have, were you practicing at both of them the whole time? Did you have an associate? How, how did that go for you? Right. So my first office, I was the sole doctor for that. And I worked, um, four days a week there. And then my second office was open three days and I had a part-time associate that worked two days and I was there a day. So I was doing five days of clinical dentistry. Okay. Um, but that also meant that I would be doing administrative stuff on the evenings or on the weekends mm. because um, you need to have that administrative time if you're busy doing dentistry all the time. And so, so yeah, that's that, and that's how it worked for um, for a while. And I was actually looking for um, a full time associate uh, to help split between the practices. Oh. But that never materialized. So after a couple of years of doing that and just kind of uh, burning the candle at both ends, that's when I had to take a take a step back and be like, "This this is not worth it." And uh, and that in twenty at the end of twenty sixteen, that's when I closed that um, that first office because. And I'll go into you know why I chose to stay in my second office. First. Okay, interesting. I didn't this is a plot twist. I, I didn't realize. Yeah. This. And, and yeah, so I actually kept the second office and that's the one I'm currently in. So So <laughs> was there a moment when this like just finally clicked? Like tell me about that decision. Um what what was the straw that broke the camel's back? You know, it's it's actually funny because um I had uh I worked with a few different consultant companies um throughout the years. And at that time I had been working with um Sandy Purdue, um classic yeah. practice. And so we had we had our private coach out um and she did an extended stay and um she spent a couple of days at my first office and a couple of days at the second office. So she, she could see the flow of both practices and stuff. And I knew at, just from a quality of life standpoint, I knew I was going to whittle down to one. Mm. 
And the second practice, the location was better. Um, it was a more dated, it was a dated practice, but I mean, there was still room to finagle and it may, and add in a fourth operatory and stuff like that. And it um, has a better draw from surrounding communities and stuff like that. And the team was better. Mm. Um, if you imagine, you know, that office, my first office, it had been closed. It had been vacant for a few years. Mm. And so there's no practice to speak of. So it was basically a startup versus the second office um, had been fully functioning for over 30 years oh, wow. and had some team members that had been there for 20 years. Right. And so, um, and so it was just a better, is a bet, a better running machine and less stress for me. And so that's why, and so after talking with my consultation and then, um, also just the overall stress and everything, she said, yeah, that's, if you keep one office, let it be your Yates center office. And that was kind of the unbiased third party, you know, view that I, that I kind of needed. That was what I, my hunch was, but at the same time, I did seek out that kind of third party validation on that. And that's, and so about a month after her visit, that's when I shut the office down. <laughs> I moved right towards it. How, how much, how difficult was that? And how much relief was there in that? Yeah. So it's, it's not fun to do mass firings, um, yeah, you know, huddle all the team around and say, okay, this is your last day of working. Okay. Um, that's nobody enjoys doing that. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, um, and also reaching out to the patients and letting them know. Now, luckily my locations were 30 miles apart from each other. Those are okay. what the towns are. That might sound a lot to some people, but here in rural Kansas, I'm, I'm 20 miles away from the nearest Walmart. So yeah. like, that's just, um, life. that's just normal life. Yeah, exactly. So it's nothing. So we just merged our records. Oh. Um, we were with open dental. And so we were able to merge the two practices um, pretty pretty seamlessly, not too many hiccups on that. So we just, uh, we, we merged everything. My first office was digital already anyway. Okay. And so that made it super simple to just transfer things over. So the people who still wanted to come see us could still come see us. Um, earlier that year, they had put in a federally qualified health center, mm -hmm. um, in, in Eureka, my, the office of my first, uh, uh, the town of my first office. And so, um, they had a dentist. So I'm like, well, you know, uh, if they want to stay in town, they have somewhere that they can go. Right. You know? But if they want to come see me, which the vast majority, um, still come over to see me, then I'm only 30 miles away. So that's awesome. So, so really it ended up being more of a, a an acquisition and merger <laughs> more than anything, which has been awesome because I'd much rather have instead of two practices, doing 450 each, I'd rather have one practice doing a million, right? right? Or not even 900,000, but it was just like with one overhead, you yeah. know, what I mean? and one staff. So yeah, you, you've halved your drama and, and halved the, the stress and the overhead. I mean, all right. of the things. So, exactly. That's awesome. So, and, and it, it seems like, uh, you know, that was a hard pivot to make. It was a hard decision. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was painful to do. But in the end, has absolutely been worth it. It sounds like. absolutely one hundred percent. Another aspect of this is that uh, some people want to grow by like growing the number of patients at their office. Other people want to grow by adding multiple locations. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think a, a, one of my favorite ways to grow is is learning more procedures and doing more. Absolutely. So is that something you were doing the entire time? Because right now you you pretty much do everything and, and tell us about that journey. Is that something you've always done? And, and um, did you double down on that post kind of merging the practices, uh, share your journey around CE and, and stuff like that? Yeah, I, I, I started, even when I just had one practice, I'd started uh, down um, really, really tackling CE from basically to starting my third year out of school. 
mm. is when I started really diving in. And it kind of started with ortho um, because where I'm at, the nearest orthodontist is an hour drive away. And so I would refer um, people to ortho and then especially kiddos. I wanted to, uh, I started with um, Rick DePaul, six months, uh, the Power Crocs, yeah. um, six months braces. And that's where I started my ortho training. And then I realized, but that at least opened my eyes to ortho. Um, and so I started seeing these kids and understanding their problems. I'd send them off to the, uh, to the orthodontist for a consult. And I see him six months or a year later and nothing's happening. I'm asking mm -hmm. mom and dad, what's, you know, what's going on? And they're like, Oh, just, it's an hour drive. And to do that every three weeks for the next two years just wasn't feasible. And so they're just, kind of have to live with it. And right. Like, that kind of sucks. And so, um, and so I was like, okay, hour uh, drive that for <laughs> every ortho point, like, yeah, exactly. Oh. And so, uh, so then I started digging into comprehensive ortho and being able to add that. And then, um, and that ended up being what I truly love. I love orthodontics and don't get me wrong. I like surgery and implants and all that stuff, but I love like orthodontics. It's mm. just, um, it kind of fuels me in a way, a uh, different way that, um, other sides of clinical dentistry, um, can't. So, um, so I started ortho and now I also dealing with phobic patients, phobic patients are everywhere. So I went and got, um, oral, uh, sed uh oral sedation training through docs, cool. um, back in 2014 and then, um, started offering, uh, implants and, and started off with Zimmer and, um, and that's, and I started placing those in about 2015. Okay. And this has gradually just built and built and built from there. And I had also had had a, um, I, for whatever reason, I wanted to get my fellowship in the Academy of Gen General Dentistry. I want to get my um, fellowship as like early as possible. Mm. I had the goal of getting it by five years out. And so uh, I barely missed it. And it's just because my daughter was born like, three weeks before <laughs> priorities. You know? Yeah. I'd already taken the test, but to get your fellowship, you have to be there. And, um, yeah, so I went the next year. So instead of five years out, I got it on my sixth year out, but in my mind, um, I got it five years out. I... <laughs> exactly. So, um, and then it's just grown from there. The more that word gets out of what we do and the more people that we come in from word of mouth and everything, um, but it's just like anything, the more you learn something, the more you realize you don't know. Mm -hmm. And so you, there's always, always something more to learn. And so that's been kind of my track over the last um, eight years of really diving into the continuing, continuing education. Okay, that's awesome. Um, with this, kind of the last thing I wanted to ask about was in terms of marketing, Mm -hmm. how much and what kinds of marketing have you done in your marketing in, in your market and your, uh, you know, small town, rural area and, and what's worked for you and what hasn't, or have you had to market to really grow? Have you just kind of grown via referrals and word of mouth and, and, you know, just by virtue of being the guy that, that people know about and, and go to, what have you done? I, um, I still believe in external marketing. Um, word of mouth is always going to be the best. And so we always want to give the patient the best experience. We want to be asking for reviews. We want to ask people for referrals, say, Hey, you know, Mary Jo, you have been an awesome patient and we just love seeing you. And if you have any family or friends that, you know, could feel could use our help, please, you know, send them our way. Right. And just by asking in a, in a very non pushy, non salesy way, um, it's amazing how much you'll get from that if they truly are impressed with you. Mm. And so that's always going to be the foundation, but for external marketing, um, here in, um, rural areas, um, I have great success with mailers. Okay. Um, the co and the company that I'm using right now is awesome uh, for that, and I've have I've had, had great great success um, with mailers. Um, 
Facebook ads do fairly well around here too. Okay. Um, I've done radio. Radio wasn't radio. You have to commit to like a long haul. Like people have to hear it repeatedly. Mm. Um, over time, like I'm, I, I, I ran radio for a year back in 2017 and I'm now getting people in, um, for like implant consoles. Cause that's what my radio at spot was, is, is geared towards implants, um, that heard my radio ad in 2017. Wow. And this is the first time that they're calling the Holy office. Cow. Yeah, it's crazy. But, um, Radio, I did not see a big like, ins, you know, ROI versus, versus mailers. Um, you know, in a metro, I don't know if I'd be sold on mailers because just the amount of junk mail people get. But right. out here, it's more sparse, so it's more it grabs more attention, more impactful, just less yeah. noise to be distracting. Exactly. That's awesome. Well, uh, this this has been great. I, I'm in this season on growth. I'm trying to capture stories of people who've grown in different ways and had to shift and had to pivot. And and I feel like we captured that today of, of the ways that you've grown, the ways that you've changed and pivoted. And sometimes like stuff falls in our lap, like this practice that, that right. ultimately became your, your practice where you are today. Right? <laughs> that's, that's an incredible story. Yeah, exactly. And what's, what's crazy is now, you know, we remodeled, we added the fourth operatory. Oh. Now we have all sorts of digital stuff here, cone beam, a couple of scanners, printers, mill, all that stuff. And so um, it's kind of crazy in just the three years since we remodeled, just how much it's evolved. And now we're kind of getting to be known as kind of like the, well, if you're looking for kind of next level stuff or, you know, advanced services, like this is the place to come to. And so it's really cool to start seeing that take shape. That's awesome. Uh, I guess you just, anytime you say something, it triggers more questions for me. So <laughs> we talked about Sprint Ray um, for printers, um, scanners. What what are you scanning mm -hmm. with these days and, and what's your experience been? Yeah, my, my uh, first scanner, my imaging is through CareStream. Okay. So I have the CareStream 3600 scanner because it just integrates with all the rest of the digital workflow. Got it. Um, so that was an easy, that was an easy thing for me. And it's, it's been a great scanner. I've had it for three years now and um, yeah, just uh, really been impressed with it. And then recently we just got the, uh, Itero 5D. Okay. Um, because I'm I'm upping more um, aligner stuff, and I wanted an Invisalign option. Um, the basically not not to wage war on the aligners, but it's basically for me. It's either in house or Invisalign. Okay. And as we became busier, um, and my team is busy, and they don't have the time to be producing. Right. Um, these aligners and stuff like that, then um, that's why I went with the 5D, oh, with, with the iTero, because I wanted to offer the um, Invisalign option as Do you, well. Have you noticed a difference in your case acceptance there with the iTero and, and kind of the before and after and all of that? So, so I actually don't use the simulation. Okay. I just, I just don't like, I'm good at talking ortho with right. people and, um, uh, my team is good at talk. My hygienist is fantastic. And I wanted to get the Itero, not for restorative scanner. I have the care stream. So my crowns, bridges, implants, you know, restorative stuff. I use my care stream for, I got the Itero because I wanted it to be a hygiene education tool. Mm is number one a thing that i got it for i've i've maybe scanned two crowns on that thing wow um it it for me the itero belongs in with your hygiene or your assistance um because they need to be talking about malocclusion the 5d has the neary the near infrared you know almost like a carry view type thing. So it's almost like a see-through x-ray, but without radiation. So that thing's been awesome to pick up inter, interproximal decay that might not even be showing on um, radiographs. Cool. Um, the occlusal gram, so the bite mapping. So you kind of, uh, 
people are visual. So if you show up there, throw up their bite there and they see a bunch of red on their bite, you know, they, it kind of opens their eyes to be like, yeah, maybe I am grinding my teeth right. and stuff. So that's why I got that one. It's not for restorative. People can use it. But I mean, for me, it, it especially if you're going to be an orthodontic office, it belongs in hygiene because and it's the only scanner that I found that is team friendly. Hmm. Um, and it really involves that patient. If I was just looking for a scanner for restorative, I wouldn't choose that one. Okay. But because of how we are pivoting our office to be kind of the comprehensive care, um, patient education, kind of holistic dental health place, um, that's why I went with that one. That's awesome. Cool. No, and and I love just hearing everyone how, like how they're integrating each of these pieces together. And you found a workflow that works for your office, for your team, your hands, um, both the restorative side and the ortho side. You've, you've got your go to. So um, this has been awesome. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for sharing your journey. And then um, if someone wants to, to learn more about your existing and upcoming ortho courses, should they go to 3ddentist.com for, for the future? Work? Yeah. So anybody can reach out to me anytime. I'm easy to find on Facebook. Um, my, uh, my email is Dr. Matt, D-R-M-A-T-T at YatesCenterDental.com. The oh. town I'm in is Yates Center, Kansas. So Dr. Matt at YatesCenterDental.com. Um, my personal website is Dr. Standridge, D-R Standridge.com. Um, for my uh, teachings and kind of blog and stuff. And then we will have the Eventbrite listed on the 3D, 3D Dentist website soon for the February and I believe August um, adult cosmetic ortho courses. So Perfect. Well, uh, thank you, Dr. Matthew Standridge. This was a delight. Thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for listening in another episode of the Shared Practices podcast. We will talk with you next time.